Hello everyone and welcome back to my Tomorrow's and Beyond series in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. It's been a while since I made a video in this series and that's because I've been contemplating many things including primarily moving to KSP 1.12 and so upgrading the series. But first we should probably bring the crew that we currently have in orbit of Mars back and then I do the upgrade. And so that's what I'm planning to do in this video, bring them back, make sure that they're home safe and then we'll move to 1.12 and see if it works there. And the reason for that is because it's probably better if everything is up to date to the latest KSP standards. Uh, Scatterer will be improved so we don't have weird coastline stuff going on. I've already tested a Tampico launch site that replaces our current launch site as well as the Bahama landing site that we want to use for the Orion carrier plane. I've already tested all that in 1.12, so we can just go ahead with that, and I think that'll be nice. So, yeah, I also have been working on other designs, especially for the crew cabin. Uh, so we'll eventually have to time warp 269 days, but let me just remind us about how our current cabin is, and that is the St. Louis. So the crew cabin was um, really crew habitat. It's very ostentatious, right? It's uh, actually, uh, we don't have a whole lot of light here, but it's packed right now with uh, oxygen cylinders and all sorts of stuff. So it's hard to get the camera right, which is another thing we need to fix. But uh, okay, uh, but I think the whole arrangement needs to be reworked instead of having it like this. Oh, there's a Kerbal in a seat there. Uh, so I've been thinking about how best to do that, but the camera situation is not great and using the pass-through system is nice, but I'm still working on how best to deal with that as opposed to how it is right now. So I've made some changes, basically a mix of the stock IVA view plus the pass-through system and I've been working on that. So a new habitat that probably won't be so wide will be rather longer, much more like the module we have up front here, but maybe a little bit wider than that. And yeah, so stuff like that I've been pondering. And obviously I've been making videos on other things as well. So yeah, but that's all coming up. I do intend to continue the series in what will be effectively season two of To Mars and Beyond. And season two will start after these guys come back home. So anyway, let me do the time warping and we will endeavor to bring them back. Now there is a catch to this. I've time warped to closer to the Mars to Earth window. But the catch is that in order to bring them back fully, we're going to have to skip the next window, the Earth to Mars window in 82 days. And well, we're in 2024. And frankly, I don't think this is going to happen anytime soon anyway. So... Uh, we will just skip that one. We currently have a ship under construction in orbit, the Joplin, and so we will continue to construct that, but we'll go for the next opportunity afterwards. So yeah, that'll be the plan. So let's hop back to the St. Louis and see how things are going there after time warping more than 200 days. And naturally, I'm going to have to engage in very tedious ion engine burns, which I will liberally edit out. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll get the highlights of all that. They do have some liquid hydrogen left to use. Uh, we'll probably do that for the critical part of the burn. The life support is rebalancing, as you can see, and our vessel mass is going down because there is some wastage. It's not being recycled perfectly. And there's Mars. We're at a high point in our orbit, actually pretty close to Apoapsis right now, which is not where we want to burn from, but uh, we do not know. One reason why we're coming here a little bit early is because we have an eight-day orbit and we will need to burn out from the correct location. We're probably lucky. I think we can burn out from close to our... Per no, it's a little, little bit askew. It's actually not great. Um, I mean, obviously we can exit like this. The problem is this is not the angle we want to go out at. S uh, 74 meters per second is nice and all. But look what happens, uh, we end up going that way, which is the wrong way. We don't want to go that way. So, this actually makes things more complicated. Uh, in fact, the uh, exit location is more like over here at Apoapsis, which is weird, but true. 
And we will still need more. So even though we were in this loose orbit because of the timing of it, it's rough. <laughs> um, we're already over here, so we'll have to we have to wait on that. And how long is the burn god take? If we just did ion engines, let's see. Seventeen days with one, and eight days with the uh, with two. Well, but that's for all the delta v. Maybe four days worth. Okay, well, let's say we've got this approach, and it's gonna cost us a little bit more. Let's see how much it takes to make orbit. That's sort of critical. It doesn't seem like it's too much. It's wobbling a lot, but it's 1,600. So, in theory, we might have it. <laughs> in theory. So, we're going to do this. And we'll see if it works out for us. We didn't do a landing. We just sort of made orbit. Presumably did some science. And we're coming back. Also, of course, tested out the theory that this would work. Ion engine burns, especially four-day ion engine burns, are not the easiest thing. Okay, ion engines on. And time warping. And we will depart Mars, that's for sure. We already have an escape apoapsis. That's not the problem. Escaping Mars SOI is not the problem. Getting to Earth is the problem. I don't know if we're going to be able to use much of our... Uh, my throttle isn't working right now. Much of our nuclear engine fuel at Earth or not. So I think I'm going to use it here. I might regret that. I'll use some of it here. Let's put it that way. I mean, as far as our planned route out versus where we're going right now, we're not too far off. But then again, hitting Earth has to be sort of precisely done, and we are off. That's for sure. Not exactly right. Very distant from Mars now. Yeah, I should have done this nuclear burn at the maneuver node instead of here. Would have helped. Okay, well, I uh, will just proceed with the ion engines now. We'll save some of the hydrogen for Earth arrival. It doesn't seem to be boiling off. So, okay. Uh, okay, our maneuver node got messed up because we exited Mars SOI. Okay, we're gonna have to redo things. We are now in solar SOI already in the midst of our burn. We weren't really going to get much Oberth effect from Mars the way we were going anyway. Since we were burning from high up. But in a way it's the worst case scenario, so it's a fair thing to test. Only about 500. Well, we'll have to see how well we're approaching Earth, but it seems doable. I think we'll want a mid-course adjustment in addition to this. We don't really want too snug an approach at Earth because we're going to be doing an ion engine burn, <laughs> potentially, and uh, that could move our periapsis one way or the other anyway. But this is the plan for now. 1,300 there now. And ideally, what we want to do, because there's the radiation belts, right? And so we're capturing in a high orbit. If we uh, left it there, we would have them, while they're waiting for somebody to pick them up, because they don't have a Earth entry vessel, uh, they would be passing through the radiation belts a lot. So after we get this capture, and of course we can't do this accurately right now, uh, they would actually boost up to a nice circular orbit outside of the radiation belts, uh, and hang out there, and we'll probably do that, but let's see how that all works. Otherwise, yeah, they'd get 
too much radiation. I thought about putting uh, Kerbalism in here, but obviously that didn't work out exactly right. Um, okay, in the midst of the burn, and let's make sure it's doing what we're wanting it to do. We're not getting an encounter. Oh, no, we do. We have an encounter. Uh, but it's going further away. All right, we got an encounter. Let's get rid of the capture burn for now. And I will adjust the mid-course adjustment. Adjust the adjustment or correction. Everybody calls it mid-course correction. but So I'll correct the correction or adjust the adjustment. All right, 242 days. We have, and, and our maneuver is in 127, and it's a mild maneuver. 242 days, we have plenty of food, water, and oxygen left. Uh, we probably should carry less water next time. That'd save us some Delta V. We're still carrying a little bit of the Kerbalism shielding. Okay, engaging in the correction. Overall, for an ion engine escapade, it's been relatively painless. Okay, that's a minimum right there. All right, 115 more days and they're back. Well, at least in Earth SOI, which is important. And it'll take 1,433 to capture. We should be able to do that within Earth SOI with the ion engines, plus the remaining fuel for the nuclear engines. All right. Otherwise, we would have to do an extra maneuver outside of Earth SOI, uh, just ahead of our Earth encounter, in which we would pull down our orbit ahead of time, even though that's not very efficient. But we could do that in order to help things out. But it's better not to do that. Okay, we have re-entered Earth SOI. And you can barely see it, but Earth is right there. Okay, well, starting to try to do some of it, but the maneuver node's not gonna be correct. We just have to watch out for our apoapsis and periapsis. Continuing to time warp, the periapsis is now going down. I had to adjust it so that it would, but we don't want it to get too far down, of course. Yep, now it's getting too far down. Pointing retrograde is more or less okay, but it has to be very finely. You can see it's still going down there, the periapsis, so we have to be careful. Yeah, it's not exactly retrograde that we have to be at. Okay, we are below lunar orbit now. Still retro burning all the way with the ions. One thing we'll be very interested in is what we have had too much of. And we'll probably diminish that. But of course, we've only got two Kerbals right now. Another thing we have to think about is uh, the situation with four, right? We don't want a mission with just two. One thing that's been true about this series so far is that confining myself to the Ryan carrier plane, things perhaps have not moved as quickly as I would like. But uh, the limitation is valuable, especially in terms of thinking about the systems that we're developing. Uh, but maybe using a heavy lift vehicle like the Kasei rocket to expedite a few things would be a good idea. Kasei rocket being the sort of logical equivalent of the SLS, uh, if a little bit more capable. Well, hopefully we've done enough of the ions. We've basically been burning them all the way through in Earth SOI. Hopefully we've done enough so that uh, nuclear engines can do the rest at periapsis. Otherwise, we'll just keep burning with the ions afterwards. Looking good. Looks like the nuclear engines will do the trick now. All about boil-off mitigation, but I think we only had one tank that was really mitigating boil-off. Uh, even though everything is sort of symmetrical, has the same radiators, but we emptied uh, this tank completely. And 
all the fuel is in this tank because it seemed to deal with boil off the best. Okay, we, uh, well, we need a little bit less, but I'll say we've captured. We have captured. And we'll bring it, of course, to below lunar orbit. We'll leave what we can leave in the nuclear system. Let's just go back to ions. So, we have gone to Mars and come back. We didn't do much at Mars, admittedly, but it was a test of the system. And it'll give us valuable information about where we have extra margin, like the MMH and NTO. Got more of that than we need, though. If we have a lander, we might want to have extra. But, you know, we'll see. That electric charge doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now. Let's just, uh, that's a KSB Interstellar thing. KSB Interstellar is doing whatever it does with those numbers. I'm not going to ask. Probably when we, oh, I, I'm not on SAS. Uh, probably when we restart, it will have those fixed. Just burning this way, it'll lift our periapsis as well, this sort of radial-ish burn. So we are like that right now. I don't want to give the crew return vessel too much work to do. But I think what we'll do is we'll lift our orbit up. And I think 60,000 should be outside the radiation belts again. I don't have the Kerbalism display of that, but we should be able to get to there and pull that down. And say that that's a relatively safe orbit. It'll be it would have been nice to be in line with the moon and everything, but this is not too bad an inclination. So it'll be about a thousand meters per second more, a little bit more than a thousand, and it says we have that, so we will use it. It doesn't seem like we have a whole lot of extra delta V if we're going to do all these uh, maneuvers as well. Okay, SAS and ignition. I don't even think we built in a water recycler in this, did we? Yeah, uh, well, we have we have an aquaponics option, but we never used it. Okay, uh, well, it's gotten a little bit lopsided because we are far away from our intended burn location, periapsis. So we'll just leave it here at 71.9 by uh, 56.4, and we are going to see if I can send something up to rendezvous with them. Uh, of course, we have the little uh, Lynx spacecraft, but can we launch the Lynx spacecraft on the Orion carrier plane with enough Delta V to get up to here? And that is the question with its funky orbit right now. So let's see if we can do that. Total vessel mass in orbit around Earth after the whole trip is 117 tons. Okay, I don't think we've launched uh, this sort of assembly on top of the Orion carrier plane before. This is a Lynx spacecraft on top of the Hydrolock stage that we've been using for high orbits because we are going to a high orbit. And we're going to need to target our spacecraft in that orbit, uh, St. Louis. And we are going to need to wait until a node with it. And I think we want it on daylight side. And, oh, okay, that's probably more than enough. All right, so uh, it looks like a 58.8 .8 degree heading, which is uh, north of Cape Canaveral. We normally launch to a 75 degree heading with the Orion carrier plane. We'll shade a little bit north. We'll go 72-ish, I guess. And then we're going to have to compensate for that a little bit. Uh, probably it's not going to be able to get the upper stage to quite as fast a speed as it did on the 90 degree or 75 degree heading. All right, ignition and launch. So we will have to keep that in mind. Uh, we'll go 72. That would still be okay for the Orion carrier plane to get back, I'm sure. And roll 180. We are still launching from Brownsville, so the trajectory is from Brownsville to Cape Canaveral rather than Tampico to the Bahamas, but again in 1.12 I plan to have it be Tampico to Bahamas. 
Well, we should be past max Q at this point. The inclination is adjusting appropriately. But the descending node is coming in a little bit fast, so we still need to do some of the correction with the upper stage. Which is not efficient, but what can we do? Uh, we do have this plan that the Orion carrier plane should be able to land at Cape Canaveral, even if we're not following it down or anything. Okay, cutting the engines a little bit early and rolling. Let me see how we're doing overall. Okay, rollover complete. We'll reserve some fuel. It looks like we'll get to 4,000. Which is the normal orbital speed that we cut off at. Okay, and... Separation. And launch escape system jettison. Not that we really needed it in this case, but pods are expensive too. We are not controlling from the right thing. Oh, oh, uh, uh, kill rotation, kill rotation. Okay, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, okay, stop. <laughs> uh, we are not controlling from the right thing. Shoot. Um, control from here, kill rotation. We may be in a bit of trouble. So you can see how our trajectory is going, we're pushing it north, but uh, Cape Canaveral's right there. Delta V-wise, it's still a little bit dodgy whether we can get up to the St. Louis or not. Okay, well that's orbit, 234 by 215, let's say. And we still have 5 degrees of inclination to fix, but we are going to a high orbit, so it's easier to fix it up there anyway. Uh, 2,086 meters per second, and let's see what we can do here. Um, maybe at that ascending node, we can boost up. Honestly, though, it looks like if we... Yeah, we, we, we can get a pretty direct encounter if we go on this side. So that's probably a better idea. We're going to have to use some juice from the service module, too. It's not going to be just the, the transfer stage or the upper stage helping us out here. But I think the service module can finish the burn and then we'll still have enough to cancel out that relative speed. It's pulling it back down. We need to pull it down by another 1,400 kilometers, I, sorry, 1,400 meters per second. I don't know about that. That's a little bit difficult for all this. Maybe we'll get the ship to help us with that? I don't know. Okay, well, we'll go with that for now. Alright, well, we better start out now. Selling fuel down. And ignition. We carried a lot of animation NTO on this stage. We probably did not need all that. If it turns out we don't have enough Delta V, we'll have to optimize the stage a little bit better. But then again, all that flippiness did not help either. Make sure this amount is not being used. Okay. Right, well, we can't use all that animation NTO. Separation. Alright, and... This little engine. Oh, we lost our node. We'll just kill rotation and keep burning like this. We have 3,000 in here. I don't think that's enough to get all the way up and bring it down. Not when we have to burn a whole 700 here too. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm not confident this is this is gonna work out. I don't know. I don't want to waste the time. So let me optimize this a little bit. We'll cut out some of the MMH and NTO. We'll try not to flip around all over the place this time. And uh, I'll, I need to squeeze out another 700 meters per second out of the second stage, and that would do it. But that's maybe a lot to ask. We'll see. Okay, we are proceeding again. 
with our newfound wisdom. Sorry for the revert, but this isn't a career mode save, so that particular rule does not apply. This is still sandbox. Oh, oh, oh we're, we're closer than I wanted again. Okay, SAS on, throttle up, and ignition, and launch. Otherwise, our ability to line up with it was pretty good, but now we're launching even later than last time, which is not what I wanted. I made the upper stage a little bit bigger since we seem to have extra in the Orion carry plane beyond the 4,000 meters per second, so it seemed like it could carry a little bit more. Okay, engines out and rolling. The core we need to control from is down here. Let me just bring it up. Okay, orbital speed building up. Uh, we'll cut it there. All right, separation. Uh, we can't see the corner anymore. Now we can. Okay, control from here. Launch escape system jettison. SAS on and ignition. Okay. Well, this time we're in a better shape. We've got smaller RCS tanks. Well, we'll certainly make orbit with more Delta V this time, but will it be enough? Still five degrees of relative inclination left. Okay, 199 by 193, and we've got 2,600 now. So we've got about 550 extra. And if we keep things tight, that should be enough. So we'll see. Now it's over there, so we want to burn out from this node again. And again, it's pretty darn close. Timing is good. Okay, selling fuel down. And ignition. Okay, that is the end of that stage. Let me try controlling from the pod and hope that I keep my node, but I don't know if I will. Alright, separation. And ignition. I didn't. <laughs> but it's fine, we just need to intercept the St. Louis and we could probably do that with our current orientation. Let's target the St. Louis though. Oh, we don't have comms. Why why can't we communicate with that comsat? Yeah, I have no idea why we can't commute oh uh Okay now we can. Okay, shut down. Okay, we may have overdone things a little bit, but we're probably okay. Barely, though. Yeah, we had all these West Coast sites, and we had that satellite, and I was not thinking that we would have com communication problems here. For some reason, we had communication problems. I mean, that satellite's connecting to, like, everything else, but not us. Oh, well. Okay, we are getting to 90 kilometers of the target. At least that's what Mechjeb says. We're recharging. We're losing some methane and oxygen though. There is some boil off. But still probably manageable. Okay, ignition. We're all the way up here. But the delta V is tight. Okay, now well, we're moving away now. Let's wait. Done most of the burn. But yeah, I mean, could we theoretically get back with what we've got? Maybe, but it'd be really, really tight and probably dangerous since at that point we'll be carrying Kerbals too. In command chairs inside the pod. <laughs> but yeah, we don't want to leave them stranded. So we'll probably have the St. Louis bring down the orbit once this docks. They'll make it easier, in principle, to resupply the St. Louis as well. So we'll probably re be refitting it. Okay, within one kilometer. 
We are within 200 meters. Okay, approaching to dock. Earth in the background there. Okay, we have docked. Alright, I'm gonna switch off this engine for now. And we are going to move people over. I've got to turn off the RCS as well. So we need to open the hatch at the end of the endurance module. Uh, we might need uh, our engineer to remove that hatch. <laughs> um, it doesn't want to open. We should have opened it before docking maybe. Sometimes when we have multiple hatches, they don't all like to... This one doesn't want to open either. Oh, well, that, that's that one. The Neo spacecraft one does open. It's this one that doesn't want to open. So, okay, Barbert was, is going to have to get out of his seat first. To open stuff up. So, this is, this is a better view of the interior. And Barbert, leave seat. Okay, Barbert is ready to go, as you can see. There's our aquaponics, by the way. Though the hatch is sort of clipping into the aquaponics. <laughs> Didn't do a very good job of planning that out, did I? The aquaponics is on this side, because if we spin the spacecraft up for gravity, that would be down. Now, inventory. Well, we've got our drill equipped. Good. He can open hatch, he can't open hatch. Okay, grab the hatch. All right, we have grabbed the hatch. Well, that basically means we're ultimately gonna vent the St. Louis. I don't know if I can place the hatch back very easily. Okay. Get into a seat up front. Board. All right. There's flow. You can see our treadmill too, by the way. Okay. Leave seat. Anything weird in her inventory? Uh, you know what? That EVA propellant tank. Let's just uh, dump that for now. We may also want to dump Barberts. Board. Okay, uh, yeah, Barbert, let's not carry the EVA propellant tank down. That's more Delta V that we would need. Okay, you can just leave the EVA propellant tank in here. Too far. Well, that's from the center of the endurance module. All right, I, I guess we can't put it back then. We'd have to do it from some other look yeah, from the center of the module, which of course would trap him inside. Okay. Ah, uh, camera. Okay, board command chair. All right, so now we're going to use the ion engines to bring all this down just a bit. The St. Louis will still have plenty of RCS fuel if it needed to do some other maneuvers. Activate the nuclear engines for good measure. Might as well use that propellant now. And that's the end of the nuclear engines. Okay, it has exhausted all of its RCS, I mean xenon propellant, not its RCS propellant. Right, hopefully that'll be enough for the Lynx to do its work. Let's find out. Uh, we can close the hatch on the Lynx. Up. And undock. And re-enable RCS. Probably do, should do that before undocking. That is definitely not our Delta V. 1,400. 
Well, let's see. We'll go for 58 kilometers. Maybe 60 will be enough from this height. And it looks like we have enough, assuming that 1,406 is correct. The pod has its own RCS system, methane oxygen that it reserves. It's not turned on right now. So that'll be for re-entry itself. Okay, a little bit late, but activating the engine. And ignition. Appropriately, we are pushing away from the St. Louis. Safer that way. Okay, I'll just do the rest with RCS. There's Earth. We're coming back. Okay, we'll try 60 kilometers. Well, that's the Pacific Ocean. Just enough Delta V, including the retro burn of the St. Louis. So that was all pretty tight. Then obviously the first time we launched with the Orion carrier plane because of the mistaken control situation, we didn't quite have enough. But all right, separation, separation. Okay, and the pod's RCS is now active and surface negative. 7.6 ton pod. Yeah, where are we coming? Down here. Yeah, we'll be over to the United States. We might land in New Mexico or something, I don't know. We're sort of off to the side of it, but... Not in a detrimental way. Overheating is expected. It's not supposed to have unlimited heat tolerance here. And it's got plenty of ablation going on. I didn't use descent mode, so they will experience g-forces. Oh, Barbara Kerman reached g-limit and lost consciousness. Well, darn it, Barbert. Uh, you should have told me that earlier. I would have made sure to put the descent mode on. Oh, fine. They both lost consciousness. Personally, I, I blame all the time they spent weightless on Mars. Clearly their circulation system isn't great. Well, hopefully one of them wakes up so we can deploy the parachute. Okay, well we have control right now anyway. That was all That was all due to the plasma interference. I think this is New Mexico, right? I think that's New Mexico. Mexico. So, we'll say we're landing in White Sands or something. Okay, arrow cap deploy. All right. Nice of it to decide to go free there. Arming parachutes. All right, 6.7 meters per second. And touchdown. All right, recover, recover vessel. And Flo and Barbert have returned to Earth. It is 2025 and we will proceed further in 1.12, I believe. All right, many ribbons were given out, landing on Earth. Presumably Barbert had already landed on Earth or something, but they got the first Mars orbit ribbon. Moon sphere influence too, sun orbit. All right, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.